Happy Saturday, everybody. It's Aaron. I'm with Bowtie Treasures. I'm a Dixie Belle content creator and I'm so happy to be here with y'all tonight. As you stop in, say hi. Let us know where you're watching from. Maybe let us know what project you're working on, what kind of uh, fun, creative things you have going on this weekend or coming up, who knows. And uh, I'm excited to have everybody jumping in here tonight. But uh, let's talk about this project uh, that I'm working on. Let me just slide the camera around a little bit. This is a coat of French linen. Uh, I put the rest of that on last night. So I will tell you that I did not use any kind of scientific uh, mixture. I pretty much winged it last night. I will say that probably if I had to get a ratio, uh, probably something like uh, two thirds Savannah mist and one third of blueberry. I just wanted a hint of the purple. I didn't want to have a blueberry dresser nor did I want a Savannah Mist dresser. So I, a little bit of mixing, but I've got enough in here, I think, to, uh, uh, to make this work. And all I did was basically just do a light pass over. What I don't want to, what I did not do was any kind of, and I'm gonna go ahead and spray this just because I'd like for the paint to spread a little bit clearer or easier. Um, but I just want a light, I want the French linen to shine through. Okay, so we're not gonna, and I am gonna get on the sides between the drawers. I'm not gonna take the drawers out right now. I do need to go back and paint the tops and sides of the drawers. And if I have to remix on that, that won't be the end of the world. Um, if I can't make it to the side, I will do the side later. That, just make sure whatever you do, if you mix color, Get to a good breaking point, all right? That's the key because when you, if you have to mix some more, you don't wanna be in the middle of a drawer front and have to mix some more. So my goal here is to leave the French linen peeking through a little bit. I, I, want, I like that look and I don't want to make it uh, look perfect. I want it to look the, Maybe, uh, I think the word that we said last night on my live was French cottage kind of feel where it just isn't perfect. It's a little worn and I'm really liking that look. I'm sitting on the floor now just because I need to get down here. I've got my new epoxy floors put in and now I'm finding myself sitting barefoot more often than not. My previous floors were concrete. They weren't so comfortable to do that with. So I didn't, I probably should have measured, but I really last night was just winging the mixture. So let's stay on the front. I have a feeling that I'm either gonna run out on the front or run out on the side. And let's keep the front all the same. If you saw the left side of this dresser, it's very streaky and I had no problem with that. Uh, that you can see the color not totally mixed. And so I'm not gonna hold myself to being perfect on that. All I need to accomplish here is to get a general base coat on because the paint is definitely showing through, the French linen showing through. So you can be very, it's very forgiving. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So I'm um, rush quickly using a little bit of water just so it thins the paint out some. I'm not purposely trying, I'm not trying to cross hatch. I don't want that much texture. Cross hatching does add a lot more texture. I have more layers to add. So again, all the more reason why I don't have to be perfect with getting this on there. I just need to, I do need to make sure I get enough paint on there where most of it is paint and not, or um, Savannah mist and not French linen. I just want the French linen to peek through. Just get the paint on there. Even last night, I did not get the shading and darker color put everywhere, so I'm going to, last week I went a little short 
tonight we're going to use up as much time as I can. If I have to, I'll get the heat gun out and we'll dry. So again, I want to kind of keep my, my brush strokes fairly organized, not too much crosshatch. And that should suit us very well. So I'm gonna set that brush to the side because the next step is to do uh, this buttercream highlight. Okay, so what we did next was I'm going to get my best stang brush and I got buttercream. I chose buttercream because one, it's not white, two, it's a soft warm tone and it's gonna complement the warm tones of the French linen underneath and that's what I want. The other thing I have is a misting bottle because you want to do this a little wet and I've got a rag just in case I need it. Let me put that down there. Now for over on the left side, I highlighted the middle with buttercream. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to just highlight the middle and then we're going to do Mason, Mason Dixon gray around and we're going to see how that turns out. So I want to preface what I'm doing by saying that this is an alternative to blending, meaning if you're struggling maybe with blending, getting everything um, all mixing and getting soft, this is something you could try. So I'm just taking a little bit of buttercream, and I don't know if you notice, but I may not say it every time, but I am misting and keep, and so I'm kind of working wet on wet. The paint's wet, the surface is wet, and now I'm going to take the best thing brush. You could use the, a smaller brush. This is the <clears throat> La Petite, but I'm gonna keep this wet. And all we're gonna do now is cloud it up, fade it out. And I'm gonna do my best not to mist anymore because once you do this, misting, if you mist on top of the paint, you're gonna leave spots. So I don't kind of get that figured out. You can mist the brush. So you feel, you should feel, if it starts getting sticky, that's not a good feeling because that means you're either working the bottom, the first coat too much or your paint's getting too dry. Now I've got a couple spots right here and here that I need to soften. You can wipe your brush off. You can mist your brush if you need to put a little bit of a, you just don't want to have any edges. Now I will tell you, um, hopefully it looks okay on your screen, but sometimes my screen plays tricks on me and it makes it look like it's just not a nice blend, but trust me, I wouldn't stop if it, if it looked hideous. <laughs> so I just don't have great tech that tells me, yeah, it's, it looks as good in person as it does on camera. Yeah, I can't do that. Okay, so you can just see I'm going in little circles just to fade that out. So what we've accomplished here is we have made it so that the buttercream is fading into the Savannah Mist and the uh, blueberry. Don't, and this is what I, I'm not stressing over this one too much because guess what, my hardware literally um, is all the way down. So it's one of those epic center decorative hardware. It's gonna be the star of the show. What I just did is basically just a glowy highlight and that's all I want. So let's okay. start at the top again. I'm gonna miss mainly the middle, take a little buttercream and we're just, I'm not really rubbing this in, I'm just kinda of throwing it on there. And if you want to, let the brush kind of help soften it, but don't, don't overwork that. All right. Circles. The nice thing about the best dang brush is that it's nice and big. It covers and gives you a nice, I'm keeping the brush flat to the surface. I'm not working at an angle. Even if I do this, it's fairly flat. Okay, this brush really wasn't, it has such a flat, it's not really meant, it's not tapered like the, this, this is the La Petite. You see how it's tapered? It's a different purpose. It's made to get into like cracks and corners. All right, 
So that, that's one. If I sound out of breath, it's because I'm getting, my, I'm getting a slight workout, but that's okay. And I'm working quickly because I really don't know how fast. You have to work a little quicker on this step just because the, you, you want to stay ahead of the paint drying. And sometimes I get this little thing right here where there's like a little edge and I'll just dab it with a brush. Sometimes you might even wipe off your, there we go. You see how quick that goes? I think it's quick. And by the way, I have put my Dixie Bell link in the description. If you don't have a retailer in your area, I'd love for you to use my link. I get really excited when you guys use the link because one, it tells me you're, you're excited about the, the lesson or the products and uh, you can't wait to learn, use them. So if you're using them, that means you're excited about the, what we're learning, what we're, what we're uh, using. So as I mentioned last night on my live, I'm not doing this part because to me it's kind of odd that this dip is not centered with this drawer. It seems kind of weird. I don't think we want to highlight off-centered. That would just drive me nuts. So I'm not going to do that. All right. Uh, I think that's going to be... Let's... All I really want to do on this, to me, uh, personally, I think is just hit the highlight of the ball. Something like that. And then just soften it. Okay. This takes it from almost feeling dry brush to being, I'm gonna miss my brush just because I didn't feel like it got enough on there. So you can reapply, don't, you just don't have too much working time. Mason Dixon Gray is the same, is the color I used here. Okay, that's what we're gonna do next. And then we're going to see what, where, where that takes us. Let me close up this buttercream. Part of the fun I have is when I do these lives is remembering where all the stuff I didn't do something like the corners and things like that. Okay, so now what we have here is we have all this beautiful detail. Let's bring you in just for a close up because I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so it's, but you can see if you see, if it's coming through, you'll still see some French linen in the cracks. You could stop right now, it's a cool look. I'm just going a little extra with this piece right now, so you stop where you feel comfortable, and I'm just going to, you gotta work with wet. I'm just going to put this Mason Dixon Gray wherever I want. But keep in mind, I'm probably gonna do a lot of wiping off because I don't wanna have French linen on all the high points. I only want French linen on the low points. Okay, so, so watch how I'm, see how I'm getting it? I wanna get in the crevices, but I'm putting it only around the edges, because guess what we're doing now? Let's do a, I'm gonna do a light, soft fade. And now you might bring out your La Petite or a smaller brush. You can do this with uh, synthetics. I'm just trying to showcase different brushes that you should go buy today. <laughs> As I mentioned a while ago, be careful about misting your brush after you have paint up there because it will it could leave spots. All right, look how soft that is. Isn't that fantastic? You have to raise your voice when you're excited. Fantastic. All right, I'm going back and I'm rubbing off because I don't want the Mason Dixon gray to take over my details. And with a little, uh, just a wet rag, you can wipe a lot of that off. Now, keep in mind, my goal is to put gold here, but I still, I don't, I don't want this to be so one note and all painted with Mason Dixon gray. So I'm wiping off just to keep it fresh and add, keep the depth there, right? All right, probably should not stop <laughs> right there on that drawer like I did. Yes, Teresa said that's the thing, raising your voice when you're excited. All right, somewhere I have put my, there it is. 
If you have, if you did like me and you stopped there, you can pull out your drawer and so that you're not messing up the previous one. But this technique allows you to add depth without, I'm not using very much paint at all. So that's really cool. And notice what I'm gonna do now. I'm actually going to go ahead and shade. You need to keep an eye on your other work. You don't wanna have a, this section wide. It would be better to do all this together because I could get it so th this one's too wide. Let's go ahead and see if we can merge them. I should have done that a while ago, okay? And I don't want whatever's happening right there so I can wipe off. Just make sure you go back and soften it out. Trust me, I'm, I make so many mistakes and learn how to do this. Um, like I erased too much right there. Let's put a little bit more paint there. It's really hard to make this work without having paint. You just, you, because you're not blending. Um, I think I've gotten too wide, I apologize. So I'm actually going to come back, lightly wipe off too much. I just think it's too much. So I'm demonstrating how you can erase. Put a little bit more paint just to keep it. If you need to, mist, this only works with things that are have been misted or are still wet. Got her hair right there. I think that's tolerable. Tolerable is not what I'm aiming for actually, so let's not use tolerable. Let's keep going. Let's do the right side. And I'm gonna pull the drawer out so I can get some paint. I want to put a little bit of paint on the top of the drawer too. So I think that deserves to be faded too. You might find that you need to um, wipe off your brush if you're using it too much or putting too much paint down. I don't think I've done that yet, but sometimes I do find myself needing to do that. Let me push it back in and let's just make sure that we're keeping consistent all the way up. And you might look at the other side just to see if the balance is working. So as a review, I'm using Mason Dixon Gray with a La Petite brush and a flat small. And I am not, there's no wet paint in the middle. I'm literally just fading out one color. It's coming together so well. I'm glad sometimes, I don't know, we make this stuff up so much as, we, as I go that you guys see it live with me, so. All right, let's pull this drawer out. <clears throat> I think by the time that I get down with done with this one and maybe a couple side ones, the paint will be dry enough that we can try and put some gold on there. Because I think you, the, seeing the gold on there is what I'm really excited about. I want to see that all happen. Can you see on the, right now, I'm trying, I don't want to get the paint <clears throat> too much up there because I'm not ready to blend yet. So get, get uh, the non-critical areas first. I know I got a little bit on the right over there, but I'll try and keep that sprayed. All right, so I just did my wiping. I probably could have waited on that, but let me give it a quick mess because now we need to put the colors around the scroll decorative work. This is where the La Petite works so well. It has a tapered pointed edge. You can also use the French tip to do what I'm doing. It just depends on the size of the project to be honest with you on. And I'm just kind of carrying it over. Isn't that dramatic? Wait till the gold hardware is in there. All right, the other thing I did last night was I went underneath there's some areas I haven't done like here. I'll come back later on. But I went right here, almost creating a drop shadow underneath 
and then we'll blend that in there. And I'm not going all the way down. I want to keep that blue tones there. There's a little bit of area right, right in here I want to get. And you can even use a wet rag to, to bring in a highlight. So if I use my wet rag and I just rub right in here, I can bring out some of that blue. Just be careful not to rub too much like I did and just dress it. But, you know, you're just experimenting and try different things like that. It's always fun to learn different ways. So I'm just using some extra of the uh, Mason Dixon gray to add some depth. Remember how we did the feet? We did the highlight here. I want to bring out these. For me, when you're going to do something like gold, it's nice to have a little bit of darks around it. That gold will pop even more. And I'm going to do the, this side off camera. Just imagine it's the same thing. So I'm just adding some Mason Dixon gray. And then I'm going to soften it without going over the buttercream too much. I did on the bottom, but I like to have the bottom of the piece be a little bit darker just because it kind of keeps the eye up on the highlight. So you see how now leaving the Mason Dixon gray in the shadows or the low lights, now the scroll work's gonna pop even more when I do that later on. So sometimes I'll have a little bit of paint left and I'll come in here and I'll just find some nice areas to shade. Keep getting in the light. Just have your wet rag where you can wipe off, keep highlights going. It's really a great look. I'm just gonna do the bottom one here. So I'm gonna use the, the one inch. And I'll pull this drawer out, where'd it go? Keep misplacing the screw. So all you need to do, you know, don't forget to keep it wet. Let's just do the edges. And then you're, I am gonna wipe off my besting brush to get rid of that buttercream a little bit and just soften it. I may have put too much on there, but I'm not trying to, I don't wanna overthink this. I like it to be symmetrical, but it doesn't need to be perfect either. So that's generally how I did the, the drawer. Let me do the other side. So you're misting the brush or the wood. Uh, Kendra, when I, when I start out, I'm misting the piece, but once I get my paint on there, your, the, um, the misting can actually leave spots if you're not careful. So oftentimes, like right now, once I do that one mist, I'm not gonna mist again, unless I miss my brush. It's really whatever your piece or your moment needs, you know, but that's one way of doing it. And if you want, you can get the tops of the drawer. If you feel like the shading needs to uni be unified with the front, just be careful you're not painting the front too, because I just got that shaded. So something like that. So you can see, let me bring you in. So you can see how I did some shading right there and I left the middle the same. But for me, if you're adding mood, depth, and depending on what colors you use, this could be considered aging or grunging. It really is up to you how you want to describe it. It's just a technique that I kind of like, especially of late, and it looks really nice with the French provincial pieces, so I've just been doing it. But mix and match. I mean, you can come back over this piece and do a wash, cross hatch. You also could do stenciling. I've de de kind of determined that since this piece has already has some amazing things going for it, that I'm not gonna do any uh, extra extra to it, like stenciling and Harlequin or whatever. I, I looked at all my transfers and all my decoupage. I just felt like, you know what, I need to let this one 
kind of sing its own solo, if you will. Okay. So as I mentioned before, you swap out, you use whatever colors, the technique, I think hopefully I've demonstrated that. So you understand kind of where that's coming from. Now, probably I'm gonna guarantee you right now, the number one question, and so I'm gonna go ahead and get there first, is when should you add your gilding wax? And most people will say it's like, you know, I have people say it's like makeup, it's the last thing you put on, or do it after your top coat. Gilding wax can go on, you can put gilding wax on before you top coat. You just need to make sure your gilding wax is thoroughly dry. You know, give it a day, give it two days, whatever. But I'm gonna do it now because one, you're watching, and by the time I get this piece done, you'll miss it. But it's not the first time that I have put um, gilding wax on first to me. So you see how I'm just hitting the edges? I've done other lives uh, where I've demonstrated gilding wax. So one thing I do recommend is if you're not already following me on YouTube, go over there and subscribe. And but I have demonstrated applying gilding wax much like this to our, we have a powder room and I painted the cabinet for that room. That looked so good. So something like that is my goal. And I probably won't have time to do all this on camera. You can use your finger if you want to try that. You can use different size brushes. You find what's good for your, um, for your project. And um, so this is just, this is just the first kind of brush I grabbed. It's doing a pretty good job. It's getting where I want it to get. I don't want to hit this, I don't want to paint the whole thing gold. You can do that. You could go to town and just really gold this up. But I, the same reason why I didn't paint all the paint, you know, super good. I want this to kind of feel like it too may have also worn out. Okay. So if we step back, oops, sorry. Is it gonna, There we go. Um, I think it's adding a world of awesome to this. Now, if you're worried about, you know, sellability, will everybody like this gold? Probably not. You're, you have to figure out for your piece and what you're doing with it. If, it, if you're doing it just for yourself and you love gold, go all out. Um, commission piece, you might, I would definitely check with the customer first. Hey, you like gold? Yeah, no. Because I've had people say, ah, a touch of gold would be okay. I don't want a lot. They just don't like gold, that's fine. But the more you add, the more you are narrowing your market, I think. Um, but to me, if you just do a, a fantastic job, someone's gonna want this piece. They want a more glamorous bedroom, but not everybody likes that. This is definitely not farmhouse, right? So you see how all the shading and everything's coming together? We have totally like glammed this 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 one up and I think it's coming out really good. I do want you to check out my Facebook page or my last latest YouTube. You'll see another piece that I apply gold. I applied it a totally different way last week if you're watching with us. And uh, I used a palette knife for that, a little art knife and that worked out really well. I love using the brush because one, it's not on my finger. If I were doing this with my fingers, I'd probably wear uh, some latex gloves just because this is oil-based. I really don't want to have to clean up my finger and I can just clean up this brush pretty easily. And I'm not really stressing it too much on trying to cover this 100%. You put it where you think you need it, okay? I hope that gives you some fun things to try and uh, maybe push your limits a little bit to try some different depth shading. 
Uh, if you're looking to glam something up, this hopefully will do that for you. Thanks for following me and checking out my YouTube channel. I'm glad you joined us tonight. And uh, you guys go out and do something amazing yourself and let me know how it goes. Stay in touch, stay awesome. Have a super weekend. Y'all take care. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.